Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my May 2018 book haul. Why does time keep moving? Jesus. Answers below in the comments, please. Uh, I have a parcel from Michael O'Mara Books, so we're going to have a little look. Now this is The Ard Lamont Mystery, the real life story behind the creation of Sherlock Holmes by Daniel Smith. So this is one, they did query with me and ask whether I'd be interested in reading this and I said, hell frickin' yes, I would be interested in reading this. Ooh, this is beautiful. Let me read the little bit of blurb here. Oh, it's uh, 1899 RRP as well, it says, in 1893, young army officer Cecil Hambra was murdered, unleashing one of the most gripping court cases Victorian Britain had ever known. Even more remarkably, the case brought together two pioneering forensic experts, two men upon whom Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes happened to be based. Their involvement in the Ardlemont mystery reveals how the world's most famous detective came to be. And, to be honest, like, even if it wasn't for the Sherlock Holmes angle of this, this sounds interesting. Like, I'm all for, like, real-life mysteries, especially when they happen in 1893. So, this sounds fascinating. I can't wait to get to it. Apparently, this also came in the post as well, and I did not see it. So, I'm going to open it. Aha, this is what I thought it is. This is Father Christmas by Raymond Briggs. So, when I got myself a copy of The Snowman... <laughs> uh, last month, I realised I also used to have this book. In fact, I remember taking this book into school in year two. So we would have been six, seven, something like that. And I took my copy of this into school and we read it in class. So I thought I should probably get myself another copy of it. But uh, some little kid has scribbled on it. Oh no. I went back to visit my mum and she had collected this book from, I think from her work, which is kind of funny because she works in a hospital. But they do have like a little book exchange there. And she picked up this book because she was like, I think you'll like this. And having looked at it and read the blurb, I'm kind of already familiar with this book anyway. But having just, you know, had access to the copy, I definitely want to read it. And that is The Rats by James Herbert. There's a siren going off outside. Um, there's a movie of this, I believe, as well. And there's a family story with, with my dad. Basically, I used to have this hamster. And I think he was watching... For fuck's sake! There's a funny story about the movie version of this. I used to have this hamster, and it used to escape from its cage. It used to actually, it would do the monkey bars across the top of the cage, get to the little latch thing that holds the, you know, the, the top sunroof of the cage or whatever shut, and it would hang from this latch, drop itself, and the force of that would pop the latch open, and then it would monkey bar across the top again, and then it could just climb out. And so it used to do this all the time, and it did this once while my dad was watching the rats. So he was sitting there on like a sofa like this, watching the rats, turns around, and there's a bloody hamster right behind his head and scared the crap out of him, which is great. So yeah, I wanna, I'm going to read the rats. Very, very nice. Thank you, mother, for buying this for me. All right, I have, a, I have a parcel that came. This isn't a book, but it is super cool anyway, so I wanted to share it with you guys. So this is from Vistaprint. And you know how uh, YouTubers sometimes have their, their coffee and they make it super official? This is my Dane Cobain indie author mug. Very nice. Let me go and make a quick coffee. I like the red on it as well. Lovely. Got my coffee. I could just... This is too hot actually. I can't show you. I can't pretend to drink it. But yeah. Pretty cool. Huh. Maybe this will appear in some videos now, who knows. Alright, well, as if the mug wasn't enough, which by the way, I have repeatedly been drinking my tea from it, my coffee actually at the moment. Not that you can see the logo on it when I hold it like that, but anyway. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. It smells, it needs to go in the wash already. Okay, so it is currently the 24th of May, and this is my fourth book. So I'm not necessarily on a book buying ban. I am trying to buy fewer books for the next couple of months just while I work through my backlog and the Penguin mini box set and stuff like that. But I think I'm doing pretty damn well. Anyway, I've got this from Pam McMillan. I'm excited about this. Now this is a non-fiction book. This is by David King. It's called 
The Trial of Adolf Hitler, The Beer Hall Putsch, and The Rise of Nazi Germany. And so this is about, I don't know how much you as a viewer know about, you know, the rise of Nazism and Hitler's life or whatever. But basically, in I think about 1929, was it? There was um, uh, Hitler arranged for like a, an attempted coup, basically, in a beer hall in Munich. And it didn't work out that well. Which is why he then ended up in jail where he wrote Mein Kampf. Also, that's where... Uh, who was it that got shot? I think it was... Was it Goebbels that got shot? And then he later became a morphine addict because of his wound from the from the putsch. But, um... Yeah. Jesus Christ, man. We had a, mo we had a moment of panic. Because... Right. So, today I'm shooting on a Monday. No, a Tuesday. And the Sunday, by the way, I'm not sweaty, I've just been out in the rain. I will explain this. Basically, on Sunday, we had something called Tadpole Festival here in High Wycombe. There's the main festival that happens once a year, which is called Frog Fest. So Tadpole Festival was like a little offshoot of it in my local pub, where they have a book exchange. So I got a book, which I'm going to tell you about. I also played while I was there. So I played a 30-minute set of my own songs. Very good. Left my guitar in the pub. Becca lost the fucking camera, which is why I'm so stressed right now. I feel like I'm about to explode. I found it. It is fine. She had she'd like emptied her bag out onto the floor and it had been in her bag. So there may be some footage on the camera as well of this, this festival. But yeah, also, on my way home, it's a good job I left my guitar at the pub. That's what I just went to fetch. That is why I am rainy, because it is raining outside. But it's a good job I left my guitar at the pub because on my way home I decided I was going to run home. I thought, yeah, why not? Why not run home? Not the best idea when you've been drinking all day. So I fell down. But anyway, the book I got from the book exchange while I was there, Elephants Can Remember by Agatha Christie. It's a Hercule Poirot book. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little edition, this as well. This, does anyone remember when I did the scavenger hunt tag and one of the questions was a book with a key on the cover and I didn't have any? Look at this. I can officially do the scavenger hunt tag now. Let's hope that I am like an elephant and I remember that this has a key on it. Haha. <laughs> Today, I am watching Blatantly Bookish. She is talking about when she went to visit Louisa May Alcott's house. Okay, it is the 31st of May, so it's the last day of the month. I have a last few books to share with you guys. Okay, this is uh, Clockwork Prince by Cassandra Clare, because this is one of the books that I have to read for our uh, Cassandra Clare read-along. I actually like this. This is nice big print, so, you know, it's not the same size as any of my other Cassandra Clare books, but I don't particularly care. I actually hated the first book in this trilogy or whatever. Actually, hated is probably too strong. I just didn't like it. I just didn't think it was very well executed at all. Whatever, maybe this one will be better. I don't know when I'm going to find time to read this because I have so many buddy reads coming up. But we'll see. Okay, what we got here? Another World of Books book. So this is... Christopher Vogler, The Writer's Journey, Mythic Structure for Storytellers and Screenwriters, The New Revised Edition. So, oh my god, oh, I thought it said he'd written that many. Yeah, Christopher Vogler has evaluated over 6,000 screenplays for major motion picture studios. I suppose he just sits there and reads screenplays, doesn't he? But this is kind of, I guess, writing advice, really. There's a lot of stuff about The Wizard of Oz here. I think, from what I understand, a lot of it is about the... Uh, Aristotelian eight-point story arc where you have your, you know, your inciting incident and your beginning, middle and end and, you know, all that stuff. So, I don't know, I've never read it, but I should, uh, I should get to it, shouldn't I? He seems to really like The Wizard of Oz because I flicked through like this and everything that I've seen mentioned was Wizard of Oz on like six different pages. By the way, guess who's here? Hello. How you doing, Biggie? You good? He coughed up a fur ball this morning. That's how I woke up. I woke up to the, I woke up to the sound of the cat just going. Eh, eh. Well, this appears to be multiple books. So first up, we have Stephen King and Peter Straub, The Talisman. So I have the sequel to this and I can't even remember what it was called. Oh, Bleak Black House. 
I think is the sequel to this. And I didn't realise that it was book two until, uh, yeah, until I went to pick it up. And, um, and it said on it that it was the sequel or whatever. And then I looked it up online and apparently Black House isn't very good, but The Talisman is. And it makes sense to read The Talisman first, so I thought I'd better order that so that, uh, you know, I can eventually get to it. And then we have Jay Anson, The Amityville Horror. I've just wanted to read this for a long time. I mean, it does call it the shocking true story of an American dream that turned into a nightmare beyond imagining when it's not a true story. But whatever. <laughs> Marketing hype and all that. It also doesn't look too long, so maybe I'll get to this one relatively soon. We'll see. And then, because I'm still a child at heart, I got the little fire engine by Graham Greene. Now, part of this is also because Graham Greene is one of my favourite authors. So I'm, I'm going through, like, all of his books. I've actually already read The Little Train, which it was in hardback. And I kind of assumed this was going to be hardback. But it is not. But I don't really mind. I just want to, you know, be able to say I've read all of his stuff. I mean, I'm reading his collected essays at the moment. So, yeah. So there we have it. And on that note, that is it for this month's book haul. It's been a bit of a shorter one than usual. Actually, I don't know if it's shorter. It's probably the same length because I've been rambling throughout. But there are fewer books. Obviously, we had my t-shirt and my mug and a few bits and bobs like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I'm trying to buy slightly fewer books because the last few months I've read fewer books than I've bought. And I do DNF slash unhaul a few books, but at the same time, I've been buying lots of books, so I want to try and cut down. I don't necessarily want to have a, a book buying ban, but I do want to buy fewer books, so yeah. So anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. If not, let me know if there are any that take your fancy and or what books you've got in the month of May. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.